After experiencing heatwave conditions for several weeks, the temperatures were at last starting to drop and it was a perfect time to head back to our favourite lake, Lac de Saint Cassien. It was looking as good as ever in the summer sunshine. Normally we would stop in a campsite nearby, one of two or three, but this time we decided to hire a property nearer to the lake with our friends from Germany, Mike, Simone, Beat, along with Moritz and Addy. It was lovely to be back there chilling out with friends and enjoying the peace and quiet as well as the facilities like the fantastic swimming pool. With the lake looking fantastic below us. Of course we were there to have fun but we were also there to catch fish. Our first plan was to bait an area at the top of the north. This would help us in two ways. Hopefully it would bring fish into the area which would stay there over time. But also it was within easy reach of where we were staying so instead of going to the boat ramp and loading vans and unloading vans every day we could literally just store some gear near the spots and just walk down every morning meaning that we'd actually have more time in the swim now a lot of the time the best bite time is actually right on last knockings of when we could stay to which was about half past nine but because we were close by it meant we could stay those extra few minutes and hopefully get another bite or two Although the plan was certainly a good one and it were fish in the area but after two or three days we hadn't had a bite so we started to look elsewhere. I went to one of my favourite little bays where I've caught from in the past and it was looking good. After a couple of hours I'd seen four fish show including one really good fish right behind the boat. But just as it was looking good for a bite three pike anglers turned up in belly boats and although they could see I was fishing there they wanted to fish there too and over the next two or three hours they completely covered the area and the carp moved out. After the pike anglers had gone I did stay on for another hour in the hope that the carp was still there. But they had gone, the activity had pushed them out and the one bite I did get right on last knock-ins was from a catfish. So it was of disappointment all round. Following on from that we tried in the middle section in an area that I've caught from previously at the same time of year. But it was absolutely dead there, there was literally no sign of a fish anywhere in the whole area. It was looking tough and we did wonder whether it was down to conditions. It was a full moon period and it's not our favourite time of the month to actually get the rods out. But I've caught on Cassian in full moon periods before so I didn't think that was the problem. It was more likely that we just weren't finding the bulk of the fish. In the short time that we had left, we finally found a fish and we got amongst them. I finally got my Cassian carp for this trip and it was a beautiful mirror. I didn't even weigh it, but it was probably around upper 20s, 30 pound, and it was everything that I wanted. In fact, all of us caught from that area. The two boys, Addy and Moritz, did really well catching about nine fish. Mike had a few too, and it was happy days all round. It was fantastic. It was a good end to the trip. And in the short time we had, all of us had caught a Cassian carp. By all of our standards it had been quite a short stay at Cassian really, just a few days fishing, but we'd all caught, that was the important thing. The accommodation dictated that we had to move on, either to find somewhere else to stay, or to move on to another water. The water we chose I hadn't been to for many many years, but it was big, it was wild, and it was very low stock, so it was going to be a daunting challenge, but an exciting one. So the vans were loaded and we set off on the long drive to our new venue. This is such a beautiful place, absolutely stunning. But it is proper hardcore fishing. As French fishing goes, it's about as hardcore as it gets. 6,000 acres of water out there and there's only 500 carp in here, roughly 500 so that sort of gives you some idea of uh, what sort of challenge this place is. It is a big one for sure but it is lovely and uh, it's the sort of place you don't mind struggling really sitting here looking at all this, what is fantastic scenery. It is absolutely stunning. Um, yeah me and Joan 
I have been here once before, but it was about 30 years ago. Actually, the very first trip I come to France with Joan, we stopped off at this place. We spent one day and I uh, slept the night here and fished in the day. Never caught anything, but we loved it here. And we always said one day we're going to come back here and give it a proper go. And all right, it's taken 30 years to get here, but um, yeah, we're here now and uh, different section of the lake to where we were that first time. But, you know, it's, it's beautiful. There's lots of people about. It's holiday season, lots of tourists. Um, no anglers, though. I haven't seen any other anglers, but not surprising given the challenge that's here. Lots of people come here and don't catch. You know, basically that's it. It's, it's a struggle. So, yeah, I'm not expecting to catch really, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, I would love to get one from here because it would be so special if it's two pound or whatever. I mean, they go bigger than that, a lot bigger than that. But it would be very special to get one for sure. So, yeah, let's give it a go and uh, well, that's all we can do. Give it a, a try and see what happens. You know, maybe I'll get lucky. Probably I won't, but um, what a place. What a place. It's so nice to finally get back here. In the hot, dry summer conditions, fires are always a serious risk. French authorities take the risk very seriously indeed. It wasn't too long before we saw the familiar sight of some black smoke looming up from the far distant hills. And there's only one really effective way of dealing with those fires, and that is by a water plane in areas where it's not accessible by any other vehicle. The planes come down, they take water from the lake, and they dump it on the fire. It must have been quite a big fire because the planes were coming to and fro for most of the day, but eventually they stopped, meaning they'd done their job effectively. There always tends to be something animal related on our trips, and we were sitting there looking out and Joan said, is that a bird or a swimmer coming towards us? I looked up and I could see the horns of a deer, and it had obviously swam right across the lake, which is over a mile away to the other bank. So it was an incredible swim, but it came right across got out of the water in front of us, shook itself off and bounced off up into the hills. There's no point in any subtleties with this type of fishing. You know, it's very wild. The underwater terrain out there is pretty savage. There's loads of rocks and tree stumps, big weed beds as well. And uh, so you need tough gear for that. So I've got big, thick leaders, big mono leaders, braided mainline, and sub floats. Just cheap polystyrene floats. You get them in loads of shops. I've got these in Poland, actually. Cost about a euro for 10, so they're perfect. That just slides up and down the line, slides up to a backstop. Uh, probably about 10 yards behind the rig, just keeps the line up over those rocks. Nice big lead, 6 ounce tractor lead that is, uh, on a lead clip, so I want that lead to come off if I get a take, if I get a take. And uh, so that the line rises up above the danger sort of area. Strong hook length, big hooks, there's no point in going sort of technical and you know like uh, too small on that front so yeah sixes fours twos I've got a two on here nice big hook bait it's got that squid of course I've got some tiger nuts uh, I was thinking I might have to use them in case there's nuisance species about but it seems to be okay here actually I know there's lots of chub in here but I've not seen them um, so yeah nice big 24 mil bottom bait with a 20 more uh, 20 mil pop-up so a nice big snowman nice big strong rig and yeah, if I hook one, that's going to land it, hopefully. I always find it really fascinating to see what's going on out in front of me under the surface. Out in front there was a shoal of rather large perch that seemed to be resident in the area. They were there most days and I could go out and just see them. But although I love catching big perch, on this occasion I was just happy to watch them swimming around.
looking for actual spots to fish was a lot more difficult than I'd first imagined. The underwater terrain was quite savage, there were rocks, boulders, tree stumps and all sorts of obstacles out there, as well as really large weed beds and this was going to be a much more difficult prospect than I first imagined. As well as the resident perch, there were also a number of tench in the area and they seemed quite friendly, inquisitive almost and when I'd go out and have a look around, invariably I saw one or two, sometimes four or five of them swimming around the area. Well, when it comes to finding features and spots out here, of course I've got the, the boat and uh, that's normal tactics for big water fishing. Boat, echo sounder, motor. And I get a few people say to me, you know, why don't I cast out more? Well, casting is such an inefficient way of presenting a bait, really. Um, if that's the only option I've got, then yeah, of course I'll do it. But if there's better options, then I'm going to use those. And normally the boat is a better option of getting a, a bait out presented properly. Here, the spots out here, for such a big lake the spots are very small and I'm not fishing very far, I'm only going to go 20 metres, something like that and with crystal clear water the best way of getting it out is actually one of them. So I'm, I'm swimming the rigs out, 20 yards out with the mask, I can see down probably nearly 20 foot actually, I'm not fishing that deep, I'm fishing about 12 to 15 foot but what we've got out here is a lot of weed a lot of rocks and very few actual clear flat spots for presenting a bait on the ones that are out there are only like this three or four foot across so they're not very big and the only way of ensuring i'm actually bang on the money is to get out there drop it down by hand and that way i can see everything on the bottom throw the bait around it and uh yeah, it all looks good and I'm happy, confident the way I'm fishing. So, yeah, it's all about using the bef best methods that you've got available. And uh, at the moment, that's the best.
one of the problems with all these waters with lots of tourists is that they tend to come in very close to the rods and they just don't seem to realise that lines that are going out in front of the rods. So uh, yeah, to avoid any problems, uh, what I tend to do is just look around for a, well, a decent stone, a big stone, oh, basically. And it's something like I used to do at Cassidy. Really effective, actually. Just it's sort of a back you know. It's just kind of line right down in front of the rod tip, and uh, the line just follows the contour of the bottom. And uh, the boats can come in actually quite close with engines or paddles or whatever without taking me out. And when we do get a take, it just pins the stone off anyway, and business as usual. But say it's getting wiped out. an amazing surprise literally just sitting there and out the blue it's just absolutely screamed off took us both by surprise so I had no chance of grabbing the camera to get the fight on film but what a fight it was and uh, yeah I had to jump in the boat quick and get out because of all the rocks and snags out there but we got it and uh, yeah what an absolute beauty One of the best carp I've caught for sure, certainly one of the best French carp I've caught. 34 pound and uh, what a beautiful scaly mirror. The people say that uh, you can catch fish by accident but no one catches fish by accident here. Do you know what I mean? Loads of people come here and they don't catch anything. So I feel very fortunate to come here and catch this absolute beauty. Oh, I'm so happy with this one. Just to get a bite in a place like this is pretty special. Catch one like this, just icing on the cake. What a lake, what a fish. Oh.
right there we go all packed all done for another trip only a short one this time only five days here not long but it was lovely to come back and uh, see the place again after all these years and of course it was lovely to get that fish what a special one that was one of the best ones I've ever caught in France for sure got my usual ticket on the car when I got back shouldn't be parked here always do seem to do something wrong uh, and the French love their rules don't they but um, no fine anyway so that's the result but all done, time to head off home, plan for the next trip. So uh, that's it, see you next time.